Hey guys, it's Ethan Frank, and I hope you guys are excited for today's episode of Inside Irish Dancing. Um, before I add our guest and we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys to go ahead um, and nominate your teachers for our teacher nominations. Um, it's a great opportunity to really showcase what you know all of the teachers have been doing during this really difficult time. So just a reminder to do that. And let me add today's guest. Should be joining. Hi. Hello there. I'm here with Aiden Herf. If you want to take a minute to introduce yourself, you totally can. Yeah. So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Aiden Herf. I'm from New England, the New England region, USA. Um, I have always enjoyed dancing from a very young age um, in a variety of styles, uh, my prim primary one being Irish dance. Um, in terms of competitions, I've, you know, gone to world, gone overseas, um, and it's been great. I've had a wonderful experience. And uh, thank you, Ethan, for inviting me here today. I'm very happy to be here. Of course. Um, so obviously now we're kind of transitioning away from lockdown periods and back into, you know, a normal competition schedule. And mm -hmm. there are many majors coming up, whether it be the Canadian Nationals or the U.S. Nationals. Um, Obviously, mentally, that could be a little bit difficult and physically. How are you dealing with the stress of coming out of, you know, kind of a holding period during the pandemic and going back into that competitive stage um, of Irish dancing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for me, actually, I'm not too stressed, to be entirely honest. Um, for me personally, I never stopped dancing since COVID, even though it really was a huge setback. Um, I really decided to work on myself um, and the new set that um, my school was choreographing for me. And I really thought that, you know what, I'm, I'm I, even during these stressful times, I'm gonna try really hard not to be stressed. So coming back into it, I'm really excited um, because, you know, I get to get back into that environment. Um, do, you know, um, being said, if, The live is frozen on my end. I don't know if you, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing it, um, but the screen is frozen for me. Let me try to fix something super quick. Let's see. Sorry, did you, okay, did can you, you hear me? some of that or did I uh, cut out? I got some of it. I got. I think I got to the end, but it cut out. You just froze. You're still a little bit frozen. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's just on my end or if other people are experiencing that as well. Um, but you're, you're cut now. You're you're cut out again on my end. It's frozen for you as well. Okay. Yeah. I think there's something going on on your end. Um, but while it's being sorted out, um, if there's anything, I don't know. Um, I'll just remind everyone again. Oh, here we go. Okay, this should work. I'll add him again. Um, here we go. Okay. Hello? Yes, it's better. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, hotel Wi-Fi and is not not, not cut out for um, live, so I apologize for that. Um, but it's fine. I'm, I'm back now, right? Yes, you're good. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so where did I cut out? <laughs> um, I think we got all of that in, I'm pretty sure. Um, cause it went out a little bit earlier for me than it did for other people. Um, but with what you're saying, I think that is kind of important to say that you have really taken the opportunity of not being at, you know, all these competitions to better your dancing and focus on new choreography. Um, which mm -hmm. is I think going to show off in your results probably in the end. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> so with that, what is your biggest accomplishment so far? 
Um, in the competition setting, I think my biggest accomplishment has probably been um, getting second at the Great Britain Championships in 2019, because this was the highest I've ever placed at a major. And um, during that day, I danced my set, probably the best I've ever danced it. And it, it felt so good um, because I danced like really the best I could that day. And I'm honestly looking forward to challenge myself again with that same motive um, in this uh, next coming one. But overall, I would say that's probably my biggest accomplishment. That's amazing. And then to contrast that question, what has been your biggest step back? Uh, to be perfectly honest, probably COVID. Um, just, you know, throughout my entire career, there have been many setbacks, but I would say this has been the biggest one by far because my goal for Worlds um, 2020 was to make a top five. Um, that was the podium. That was my goal. I was shooting for that, right? And it was a kind of a tough, tough pill to swallow when um, I didn't have the chance to try and um, accomplish my goal. Um, yeah. but, I, but I picked myself back up and I was trying to continue dancing because it's what I love to do. And I think even within like not being able to go in person and having Zoom classes, like still trying to improve and think about what's coming up next in the future helped me maintain that drive or that um, energy to keep going. Yeah, no, and I mean, everyone else who I've talked to, you know, everyone has all these amazing accom accomplishments behind them. And I think their kind of grit and determination, just like yours shows through with how they dealt with the disappointment of not having worlds and the disappointment of not having fashes and continuing to dance for their love of Irish dancing. Mm -hmm. um, so who kind of in your life inspires you to be the best dancer that you can be? Well, I would say obviously my teachers, um, they are always there for me and they've always helped me from like yay high. Uh, they um, really help me both technically and mentally. So ensuring that I'm very technically sound in like, you know, crossing, turnout, all those important factors, but then also mentally strong saying like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Like if you, if you put too much pressure on yourself, then it, you're gonna try too hard and overdance, which is um, I'm keen to doing. So uh, I would I would say that um, they definitely helped me in getting getting myself uh, better prepared technically and mentally. I would say also my parents. Um, they have always been there for me ever since. Again, yay high. Um, but they um, they're driving me places, they're flying me places uh, across the country, across the globe. And they are really, um, they made it, they've made it possible so I can go to all these incredible opportunities, which is fantastic. And then lastly, I would probably say friends, um, because again, it's a tight-knit community, everyone's supporting each other, they're all rooting for you, and you know, go give it your best. Um, and that source of community and friendship is really, uh, is really inspiring. Yes, no, I, um, couldn't agree more with everything that you, oops, sorry, I think it cut out on my end for a second. Um, everyone in the dance community would not be where they are without their teachers. I mean, teachers are such an important part in dancing because yes, you can work your hardest. Yes, you can do all this stuff, but no one would even be close to where they are without their teachers. So I think that was a really important point. Um, and so already so many times you've mentioned you know, your just passion for dance and your love for dance. Why do you love Irish dance and where does that passion kind of come from? So ever since I was little, I've always liked the energy and the athleticism of it because I always enjoy jumping. Um, I'm a natural jumper, so it just played into that uh, very well. It, I, for me, especially in the light round, I feel like I'm flying or like I'm going towards freedom and happiness, which is something that I'm really striving to go for. It's also a sense of me to work towards something and striving to be better each time. And even though like with COVID that was harder to do, I could still think about what's gonna come in the future and say, okay, put in the hard work now so I'm even better in the future. So it's just, it's yeah. just giving that inspiration and perseverance. The, uh, the last thing I would say is it also teaches you how to be a good sport because you're you know, you, you, you have ups and you have your downs, right? So you learn how to take things gracefully 
and learn how to be a good winner and good loser, which is a very important life skill. I could not agree more because no matter the dancer you are, you could be, you know, a, a lower level, you could be a world champion and mm -hmm. you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. And I yeah. couldn't agree more with what you're saying and the life lessons that Irish dancing really teaches you. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously some people have, you know, not really been competing. Um, and as I said earlier, there are competitions coming up what are your advice to those dancers who are kind of nervous to get back on stage? Mm -hmm. I, I alluded to this a little earlier, but I would say um, sort of um, in a repetitive way, I would say, try to have fun, like try to really try to enjoy yourself. Um, like, obviously, if you're going like for the first time back for a fest, it's not going to be your best, right? It's not going to be you're not going to be in your tip top shape as you were right before COVID, or right? because you haven't done a competition in so long. So try to relieve the pressure off yourself and just just go for it, right? I would say that um, also building your self-confidence is key because you can tell yourself that, no, like I am good enough. Like I, I know what to do. I, I, know, I know I'm good, right? So yeah. don't worry about what anyone else is thinking um, because I have done that in the past and it's been pretty unhealthy because I have spent so much time focusing on the other people rather than myself and my dancing, mm -hmm. which has obviously not been the greatest when uh, going into competitions because of all the self doubt. But yeah. um, I think I've gotten past that point now and y you get so much happier in life and you, when you just focus on yourself, both the happiness and the results will start coming in. And I think that's very important. Yes, I think, I mean, it's so important, as you said, with not being in competition for those dancers to realize that all that all they can control is themselves. You know, they can't yep. control if someone in their competition has been doing this or that, if they've improved or not improved. It's all about them. And if they go out there and dance their best, they will get the result that they want and deserve. So I think that point was really, really, really important. And everyone needs to take that to heart because I think you know, you don't want to get in your head, as you said, um, mm -hmm. and it can be really destructive to yourself. Um, so now a little bit more on a lighter note, um, what are like some of your goals that you're currently working towards? So for this coming nationals, considering it's going to be my first major in two years, um, for me, it's a, it's, it's a little corny, but I would say that the biggest goal is to Again, enjoy the experience going back out to that major that I haven't been to in so long and getting back on that stage again. Um, I would say I have a particular goal in mind um, of what I would like to get. But um, again, the results don't always mean everything, right? Because like you could have a very bad day and win and have a very good day and get like 17th, right? So it, you never you never know what's going to happen. It's, it's subjective. Um, Speak in the in the future after when school starts again. I would say probably getting onto the box at Worlds. So continuing um, the continuation of my goal pre-COVID because I think that I I want to get it. Like you know, um, I, I want I want it badly, and I think I'm going to put in a lot of work to make sure that happens. Um, after I would say my competition phase, or maybe even during, I would say probably getting into Lord of Dance or River Dance. Um, I'm currently working with Declan Crowley, who was a former Leaden Lord, and he's uh, been very helpful um, in the show business rather than competition, especially with the arms, which were challenging because um, it's, you know, all this. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's challenging, but considering that, like, with the multiple styles um, I've had in the, in the, um, since I've taken up till now, it was it was more adjustable, but it was still unusual because you're so accustomed to having your arms like you know locked to your side with chains. Um, <laughs> and then, um, in terms of river dance, um, I love going to their camp every year that they've had it. Um, it's there's such a great it's such a great team building experience and how they inspire so many young dancers to come in and to continue dancing. Like the overall positivity at the summer camp is just so inspiring, and they have also so many other inspiring uh, discussions that they have about like rest and recovery, mindfulness, y you name it, right? So like they, they have so many things that are so great. 
Um, I would say the very last thing is that I would like to become a professional dancer outside of Irish dance as well. So I am working on that, um, either a BFA degree or a liberal arts education with a very strong dance program. And I would like to eventually meld those styles of dance with my Irish to create like, you know, a new formation. That's like the end goal, but like, you know, might as well list it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the addition of those two things will help me become a stronger, uh, versatile dancer as well as a dancer who is passionate. You know. Yes. No. I, I mean, and it's so interesting. You know, you have your goals set. You know, not just for this next major. You kind of know what you want to hit, which is really important mm -hmm. um, to keep your eye set on the prize. So I think that is amazing. Um, and I know earlier you talked a little bit about, you know, you're practicing and how sometimes you practice too hard and it kind of got the best of you. What is your advice to dancers on how to practice smart, not hard, and, you know, keeping a good mindset while practicing? Mm -hmm. Listen to your body, I think, is a big one. Um, because for me, a little while back, I rolled my ankle uh, during class, which wasn't, you know, the most fun. Um, and instead of like trying to overwork myself, I was like, okay, let me take it. Let me take a step back. Let me heal it before I, you know, I try to break it. Um, so it's important to listen to your body because overworking yourself is so taxing, especially when you hurt yourself or you feel that like you're getting to a limit where something's going to snap. Um, there needs to be a fine line, um, between working hard and overworking. Right. So yeah it's a balance of rest and recovery with the intense dance training. That's very important. And that, that was physically, but mentally, if you're super stressed out or frustrated with yourself, I would say as like, I get frustrated with myself a lot of times I have to, I have to like, you know, take a step back and say, all right, like gather your thoughts, gather your peace and then go out and try it again. Cause if you just keep hitting at it, like you're not going to punch through the brick wall. Right. Like yeah. you have to, you have to find a way of going, around it so like just to take a step back calm yourself down and try it again yeah no i mean and i agree and it's important as you said to not overwork yourself because when you do just get you know a minor twist or a strain in your leg and then you keep working you know too hard it'll be something that could permanently damage um you which is never a good thing um, so for my last question, obviously, the Irish dance world were it, it's just such a different vibe from any other style of dance. We're such a, you know, close knit community. What do you think makes the Irish dance world so unique and special? That's a good one, must say. Um, I would say for me personally, from my school, and with everything in my school, the overall community feeling of like, it's another family, you know, everyone's so supportive and everyone wants each other to do well, as I alluded to earlier uh, in, in the discussion, I, I would say that every Irish dancer just has this feeling of joy, um, especially like when they're on stage. And I feel that this overall drive to get better and to strive for more, I think teaches us very important life lessons that we can apply to our futures, not only in Irish dance, but outside as well. So I think that's yeah. something that really encompasses the Irish dance world and the importance of it, right? The yeah. last thing I would say is that I find that for me personally, and I think many others uh, do, is that Irish dance gives you the ability to express yourself in another way other than words, which I think is, Quite, quite powerful, um, especially when, you know, we're coming out of this um, pandemic, well, hopefully coming out of this pandemic, and, <laughs> um, you know, like, we're, we're life's at the end of a tunnel, so I'm going to say yes, but it's, it's, just, it's just a way of moving like no other, right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Sorry, my screen froze again. Um, no worries. Just thank you so much for doing this interview. I mean, I think it's going to be so helpful to dancers, you know, who may be having a hard time getting back into, you know, the competition scene or who just need a bit of motivation. So thank you so, so much and best of luck at everything that's coming up for you. Thank you so much, Ethan. And thank you again so much for having me. 
such a great opportunity and thank you so much. I hope you all have a great night to whoever's watching. <laughs> Anytime. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.